and see, but geobiology is a science. It's a science of specific location and disease. As you can see on the board there, it says bulb biology, which is German for building biology. And that is, how the biology of a building can make you ill or sick. Before that, there was another school. It is still in existence. It is a school of geobiology. And that is, if you put your house over a certain stretch of land, the type of geology directly under the house what is happening there, whether it's an underground water flow, natural, <coughs> a geological fault, or a high radon gas, then the geology of the house is going to make you sick. So combine the two together, the school of geobiology and the school of building biology, and that is what I do. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to concentrate how a house can make you ill in terms of technopathic stress. So more or less what I'm going to be talking about is technology or the biology, how the biology of a building can make you ill. But on the other hand, I'm going to show you how you can reverse things. So even if it is a particularly bad house, it's in your control and we can turn things around. The first sign of a very good healthy house is white noise. White noise. Now white noise is produced, was produced, and still is produced by the Big Bang. In the beginning there was the Big Bang. Whatever your relationship to any particular philosophy or religion, there is a Big Bang. In the universe, as a result of that Big Bang, there is a natural radiation. It's, it permeates the universe even now, always has done, and it perme permeates every nook and cranny of every place on this earth, always has done. And it has a sound, and it sounds like this. It's a beautiful sound. If I go to a house, I turn on my acoustic call. First of all, I want to know, do we have white noise? Because they don't know, if I have a white noise, I don't have pulse, microwaves, Wi-Fi, get all this other, it's there. And I can actually put that aside. 98% of houses don't have white noise. White noise. Can you hear a hiss? Yeah. Okay. I can hear, just above that, a little crackle of it. It's going tick, 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 tick. It's Wi-Fi. It's Wi-Fi. Okay. Uh, when I go to a house, uh, you won't hear anything like this. Um, but I can hear this Wi-Fi, and I'm going to show you how you can eliminate that and get back to white noise. So the first, all your ancestors, all the way back to Moses or whatever, live with this. Right? That is your only natural relationship with the big cosmos, with the only microwave. Look, right? That is right. At the end of that, I'm going to show you how you can still have a cordless phone. You can still be a part of modern society on the internet with all these things but without being affected by what's commonly known as electro um, smog and not be affected by it. But nonetheless, if we have a look, I'm going to quickly talk about mobile phones. Of course, here as you can see, the penetration of a mobile phone to a child's head is far greater than a human's head, right? Because the skull is much more thinner and it will go um, much, much more further. And then if you can come, you'll see some video of the increase in brain tumours in children and now, and in adults. Leukemia used to be the main killer of children, young children under um, the age of five. Uh, now it's, it's gone over, it's swung over to brain tumours. Brain tumours are now the main source of um, mortality amongst children and it's only become in the last 10 years uh, when we are using more and more mobile technology. So, and there is epidemiological evidence to actually support that. Uh, this is a good illustration. This is a 3G transmitter. And you can see that here is the umbrella effect because it's been away. And about 250 meters, you're in the main area. Right? After that, you're away from it. But don't think, yeah, I'm going to move here and I'll be away. You won't because there'll be another mask here. And there'll be another surface. <laughs> <laughs> and another surface. So, so you're all covered. You just need to be in that corridor. We've all got this. This brick wall, the other side of all this wiring, this brick wall, the other side is all the bedrooms. And if you put a bed right on the other side of this wall, which is about that thick, see how near you are to all this. Yes? And the other thing about 
these type of lights also give off what is called, there's little known about the science of it, but there is a physicist that has brought a book out and he describes it as such. But if you take a picture with a special cine camera, you will see um, what's happened. It's like a coronal discharge, if you know anything about Carnelian photography. You get ele electrons, this is a negative electron streaming, will interfere with nitrogen in the air, absorb the energy. Nitrogen has a spectrum of blue, and you will see, you will see um, blue, yes? This is just a part and parcel of um, that negative streaming. And this is a transformer. People buy houses with transformers right next, which means a huge transformer. Anyone who has a bedroom in here is going to be way over the mark. That is, they're going to be more susceptible to leukemias, cancers, depressions, and the lot, because uh, that is not within their control. So when you buy a house, you must take that in, into consideration. We, by design, when we came along, we're just mammals. We're hunter-gatherers. That's our correct alignment in the evolutionary sense of things. That's where we belong. We're hunter-gatherers, and like any other mammal, we are born with bare feet. When you walk with bare feet, you upload this energy into your bodies. Your body knows exactly where it is. It knows where it is. It has yin and it has yang because you've also got the Earth's geomagnetic field, right? It's a wonderful resonance because the Earth's human resonance resonates the same as your brain, exactly the same. Lower alpha, so you're much more calmer. If you're all stressed, just try it. Take off your feet, your, your shoes, and sit in your garden. You upload a very, very calm Earth. You should always be like that. When you sleep, you should always have that calm. The first thing I do when I go to a house, I take them in the garden. say, take off your shoes and your sock. And I measure. I say, look, I'm going to show you that you have this correct harmony with nature because I'm going to measure it in your body. And I, I use this. You haven't got time. Um, but I use this. Millivolts. They hold this and I can see that they're two millivolts, yes? I then go to the bedroom or here. If I was to turn this here now, I'll be about... Uh, 3,000 millivolts, just standing here, right? Never known in nature. My body, when you sleep, is the worst thing because of all this, remember all this light coming and everything? People sleep on average of about three to 4,000 millivolts in their bodies, which means they're not, they've lost that relationship with um, yin and they've also lost the relationship with yang because of their uh, mattress. So to re-establish that, uh, you have to sleep. Uh, if I've got time after this, I'll actually give you a, a, a demonstration of, of that. What you do, you just simply, it's on here. I can bring the energy into your bed because those electrons with its frequency and its, all its beautiful harmonics can come into your bed because all it needs is a lead, which I've got here, to any earth, into a piece of, into a piece of um, conductive cloth. This goes under the sheet that you're actually sleeping on and then you transport it back. And you will see, as soon as you sleep earth or near that cloth, all your body voltage goes down in equilibrium and in harmony, and that's how you sleep. So it can be done. We can actually do that. I haven't got time, because I've only got five minutes, four minutes, and I want to quickly say sleep in earth, reduction of inflammation, normalization of cortisol levels, improved sleep, all because you've regained that natural relationship. Um, <laughs>